Twitter has Twitter has this thing where they're like, I hate Afrobeat. And it's funny because you ask a lot of Nigerians, up until the early 2000s, all they had on their radio was nothing but hip hop and R&B. So the reason why Burner Boy is actually working in the space and why people are able to digest it more, he's literally taking samples that he heard growing up, the music he heard growing up, and recreating those and putting it on Afrobeat records. But you know they have an issue with that, right? Because he said we didn't have any culture. He said black Americans didn't have any culture. And then he turned around and sampled all of our music. And then wearing fake Tims. How are you going to say we don't have no culture and then mimic our culture? Because we letting it happen. If I'm black in America, I'm not going to none of his stuff until he apologize. Because I grew up around Africans, and they'll tell you in a minute how Americans have none of this. What the fuck am I supposed to do then? It's a room full of black African Americans. What the hell are we supposed to do right. then? Just not exist? Nah, we the sauce. We went through the hell, and we the sauce now. That y'all are coming over here using our shit. I'm all about peace and love, but I hate when I'm around Africans, and they try to downplay our black mm -hmm. Americans. We had no choice. The people that you raised, you sold us to some people that fucked us so Stop that dumb shit. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. <laughs> All right, all right, all right.
All right, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Beatzilla PDX official show. I am your host, Beatzilla PDX officially, and this is the weekly wrap up. And uh, you know, we're gonna talk about Deja Taylor. We're gonna talk about Hunter Biden, his gun arrest, and uh, we're gonna talk about Joe Biden and how this reflects on him. You know, uh, because, you know, they often say like father, like son, and mother, like daughter, so on and so forth. It's in the genes. And, you know, what another big thing about that is the Democrats spend a lot of time talking about guns, and how you got to control guns. And out of all the charges, it's gun charge. Imagine that. So we're going to go into that. Uh, so hopefully everybody is doing well this evening. Hopefully uh, you haven't had any run-ins with the powers that shouldn't be. <laughs> Y'all understand? And, uh, you know, hit that like button for me, family. If you could hit the like button, share this on uh, your social media or share this on your or text this to somebody, email this to somebody, uh, and you know, let them know about this this channel and this broadcast, the Beats Up PDX official show, and uh, you know, let's let's grow this channel. You know what I'm saying? You know how things uh, get stifled out here in these YouTube streets, so we have to just bring attention to what we're talking about. And there's a lot of attention. There's a lot of attention on my Twitter page. Uh, but, and that's, <laughs> again, you know, that's a, that's a Shillapalooza thing, I believe. Because, again, I think we called it right, as we often do. <clears throat> that's why we are the new black media. And calling it right, you know, letting you know that they were going to have to go after Uh, I <clears throat> and that's something that has been uh, happening an awful lot by immigrant tethers. These these black immigrants come over here and then start reading a few books, get a few uh, crackpot college courses, and then they believe they fully are aware of our history. So then they address us who lived it and tell us things that they learned as if it's a fact. So first, you know, one thing that I did not do, cause I came straight in and you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to open the show the right way. So we just gonna do that right now. This is the weekly wrap up. <laughs> Looks like I'm freezing for some reason. Uh, I don't know what StreamYard has going on. Uh, they have a major glitch going on in their system right now. Uh, so hopefully it's not affecting uh, the, the, the broadcast too bad. But it is janky, family, let me tell you. Um, man. You know, it, it would probably work a lot better, too, if StreamYard actually had a StreamYard app. That would help out a ton. And it would uh, probably could make a lot more things seamless that way. Just a thought, StreamYard. 
which I'm sure other people have already suggested, but I mean, I guess it's not happening. Uh, so, like I said, there there's people trying to come out disrespecting our icons. Uh, you've seen a few bug outs, bug eyed, and septum rings, and they all want to start talking about Dr. King was homophobic, Malcolm X was gay, Dr. Francis Press Welsing was homophobic and transphobic and other whatever phobic. Well, here's another. Uh, I believe she's Ghanaian. And uh, she's chiming in on Martin Luther King. If you are not emotionally ready as a black person to hear the truth of your history please scroll past this because this is not for you so for those of you that don't know martin luther king is a civil rights leader and he's pretty much known for the reason why black people and white people can be in the same space or in other wow now this was you telling us about our history. Well, basically, Martin Luther King was a civil rights leader who is basically responsible for basically black and white people being able to be close together. No. The March on Washington was a lot more than that. It was about, and the, a lot of these marches were about finance for our community, for our lineage, for our plight here in America, long before your people came here. So, yeah. Not to mention, he is one among many civil rights leaders. It was a coalition, shall we say, of leaders, black leaders with the same common goal. So see, the coalition that happened that got something done then was all in-house. Foundational Black American Coalition. Coalition. And so that's how these things got done. It wasn't just one person. You see one person as a figurehead, a face and a voice. But there's not just him by himself, him alone. That wouldn't make any sense. That's too big of a movement for one person to just be the brainchild of. That makes no sense. Stop it. The words integration. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna dive right in here. Um, Martin Luther King had a white girlfriend before he married his first wife, Coretta Scott King. And at the time, as a black man, you could not even be seen out on a date with a white woman or you would get killed. So this. <laughs> oh, I'm assuming she's speaking. And, um, oh, man, this, what's going on? Oh, my sound. Oh, man, this is horrible. Now it sounds like I'm on a helicopter. Hold on. All right. So <clears throat> had to had some technical difficulties, so we had to go ahead and cut the camera. Um, because I don't know what the hell just kept happening. But we are going to move on on with the broadcast off camera, and it's all good. So anyway, going back to this person here that thinks they should be speaking on our icons, which is loud and wrong. Let's Let's go take a listen. Black person to hear the truth about your history. Please. Scroll. But for those of you that don't know, Martin Luther King is a civil rights leader and he's pretty much known. Own for the reason why black people and white people can be in the same space or in other words integration 
All righty. So I'm just going to dive right in here. Um, total issues with this. Okay. So I'm not sure what's happening here, but we're having more issues with stream. We are and we're going to try to attempt to get through this broadcast so we don't have to uh, put something else. I'll just be able to do my stuff, StreamYard, you know? It's what I'm paying you money for. Just got paid today, by the way. So maybe perhaps... You know, I wouldn't have all these issues on a day that you actually took my money. Good grief. This makes no damn sense whatsoever, by the way. But we are pressing forward. So you know what? I'm just going to play this, and then I'm just going to uh, react after it. and we'll, we'll talk about it after it. Here we go. Claimer here. I am going to present facts to you. If you are not emotionally ready as a black person to hear the truth about your history, please scroll past this because this is not for you. So for those of you that don't know, Martin Luther King is a civil rights leader and he's pretty much known for the reason why black people and white people can be in the same space. Or in other words, integration. Alrighty, so I'm just going to dive right in here. Um, Martin Luther King had a white girlfriend before he married his first wife, Coretta Scott King. And at the time, as a black man, you could not even be seen out on a date with a white woman or you would get killed. So this interracial relationship was very frowned upon in society at the time. So after that relationship, he went on to marry his first wife, a black woman. And his wife pretty much explained that Martin Luther King was never home during their relationship. And it would be an exaggeration to see him for 10 hours at the house. Now, he probably wasn't home because he was too busy having orgies with a bunch of white prostitutes. Yes, they did discover that he was cheating on his wife with multiple white women repeatedly throughout the relationship. He would go in hotels and just have multiple orgies with these white prostitutes. In fact, the FBI actually found out about this and recorded some of his intimate encounters with these white women and would send him letters like this basically telling him to kill himself or they would expose him for cheating on his wife with white women and martin luther king was very fearful about that coming out to the public because this would very much tarnish his image as a civil rights leader at the time now i'm gonna tell you my opinion disclaimer i'm telling you my opinion based on the facts that i have researched and confirmed to be true I'm not going to argue with you about my opinion, okay? We are entitled to one, okay? I personally think that this whole integration thing never helped black people. I think that Martin Luther King's intentions was to fuck a white woman and that was his motivation. I think that we are integrated and we are still at the bottom of every single statistic out there. Um, black women are still three times more likely to die due to pregnancy related. Oh, goodness. The same old talking points. Those never get old for them, do they, folks? They definitely do not. Well, that being said, one of the things that she mentioned um, is that how the FBI got wind of it. And that, yeah, the informant was Bayard Rustin. So that's how they got wind of it. They had an informant right there up under it. So how they would get all of this information from an informant who a lot of people, especially women's groups, like to champion. LGBTQ groups like to champion. This, this guy who was right there undermining the movement, Bayard Rustin, Agent uh, uh, Snitch, and was proudly there doing it. Now, uh, what else did she just say? Um, I mean, and who knows? He, he may have messed with white women. That's neither here nor there. 
What's very interesting is that they, and if you notice, they keep trying to attack these people personally. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, like somehow whatever was going on with them has to now be revisited through a different lens from people who weren't even in this country, nor born around any of these times and then mention that they're talking about historical fact. Well, the the relationship, and, and there's a lot of things in, that people put out there and then they make university curriculum and just be outright lines. So you got to learn how to sift through the bones and sometimes take everything with a grain of salt because it might not necessarily be true what notion you're being fed. But clearly it's being done for a reason. We could see that. So there's going to be a lot more of those type of individuals coming out saying weird stuff about, uh, you know, our, our icons, our, uh, I guess, foundational black American uh, game changers because look at who they're talking about. People that actually did make a difference. Now, when they want to go besmirch somebody, they're not going out of their way to go uh, besmirch John Lewis (laughs) or Elijah Cummings. (laughs) Yeah, that ain't what they do. So, yeah, let's just keep it real. You know, and and at the end of the day, it's all a bunch of tethers looking at it for a reason to denigrate foundational black Americans. So, you know, you got to take that for what it is. And so she's a Ghanaian and then a whole bunch of blanket black talk. though. Well, I don't think integration ever did anything. Well, integration wouldn't have mattered, mattered for you if your people stay where you were supposed to be. There's nothing about what's going on in America that would have any effect on you had y'all not fled here. So it makes no difference what you're talking about. However, if you're going to talk about and be disrespectful, then you should get checked. Because nobody's running over to your homeland to go disrespect your icons over there. Because we don't know of any because you fled here. But moving along. Oh, do y'all remember the the stories, uh, uh, the story, I I think it was January 6th, January 6th, when a six-year-old boy went to, went to his school and uh, shot up his teacher. Well. Hey, there, there's been an update, and I tried to do an update video um, before, and then my sound was jacked up on that. I had sound like at the very beginning, and then the sound for the rest of the video was gone. Uh, so to give a, because there's even been more to come out since then. Um, so I'm going to go through a series of uh, one of a couple refreshers, and then catch you up to date on what's happening now. Um, so let's see. We're gonna go just one second. Um, let's see which one I need to close. Okay, I guess we're gonna start with this. Yep, okay. So, you know, and one of the interesting things that you're going to hear about this. So they're they're mentioning her, I guess she's 25. And and what she did is, I guess she lied to the police. So they're saying, because she said that she did have a gun lock. Um, She said she kept her gun on her kitchen, on top of the refrigerator. 
with, with a gun lock on it, and then the key for the gun lock was under her mattress. Well, when they say, when the police, I guess, investigated it and, and went and searched her house, um, which that part was kind of interesting, but when they went and searched her house, they didn't find uh, a gun lock or a key. So, and that's the words of the police. Who knows? But here's the here's the first clip that I want to uh, play about this story to catch y'all up to date. War begins with breaking news. The mother of the Newport News six-year-old accused of shooting his teacher, the one you see on the screen, is now facing charges. That shooting happened more than three months ago at Rich Neck Elementary. The charges coming down late this afternoon against Deja Taylor. She's the boy's mother. And news reporter Kelsey Jones is live at the courthouse for us. Kelsey, tell us about these charges that she's facing. Barbara Blaine, Deja Taylor is the mother of the six year old who police say shot his first grade teacher January at six at Richneck Elementary School. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office just revealed that Taylor has been charged with felony neglect and a misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a firearm that endangers a child. I mean, this is the case that has made international news and I've been following this story since it broke. These charges come after months of investigation by Newport News Police in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Howard Gwynn, the Commonwealth Attorney, said they have determined that the quote facts in the law support these charges against the Richneck mother for her two offenses. Meanwhile, there's more. Howard Gwynn, the city's prosecutor, has also announced that he filed a petition in Newport News Circuit Court to create a special grand jury, and that means that investigation will continue, where they will look into any security issues that may have contributed to this shooting. And this can include Richneck school leaders, the school system, and anybody else involved that could go in the hot seat. Now we have reached out to Abby's runners lawyer that filed the $40 million lawsuit against the school system and we are still waiting to hear back from her. But coming up at five, I'll have more details about this indictment for now in Newport News. I'm Kelsey Jones News 3. We'll see you coming up in less than an hour. Kel All right, see it didn't take them no long to fix no time to take them uh, you know, do we need to determine what kind of kind of punishment needs to be meted out right here? You know, we're trying to find out if we could if we can get this get this little six year old. <sighs> we can't get the six year old, although they wish they did. And, and you know, there's more facts that have came out. Um. <laughs> The story gets kind of interesting. Uh, oh boy! Let's see. Um, <laughs> so okay, so we'll go here. We'll go here because <laughs> I have more videos, but I, I think you guys already get the point. Remember uh, when this story first broke too? Uh, I, I told y'all I had a sneaking suspicion that this child was black. And the reason why I believe that this child was black um, is number one. Now, when they, they this story did come up, it kind of looked like they were trying to throw off the optics by showing, and they were, but they, they were giving you random black women in photos that were up there to pick up their children from the school. But it was given the impression that the shooter was black. Now, when you come to the, there was a school board meeting or, or something like that, and you had all the angry parents coming up there to talk about uh, this kid and, and this incident, uh, I said, I, I, y'all who saw that broadcast, I said, this almost sounds like a Klan meeting. It had a a very strong uh, clan esque energy to it, you know. That and 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 also something else. Like they're calling him a young man. That boy was six years old. Now, granted, there this this might be the reason. Uh, let me see. 
it's hopefully this plays right through there. I'm gonna have to just do something. Let's show you this. Covered in court documents today and it reveals disturbing information surrounding the six year old accused of shooting his teacher at Richneck Elementary School in Newport News. Tonight, on your side, Stephanie Hudson is in our newsroom with the latest details this midday. Stephanie. Asia Ten on your side obtained these court documents from Newport News Circuit Court this morning. They detail interviews with the teacher shot on January 6th with the boy's mother and the employee who held that child shooter until police arrived. Listen to this. A school employee. told detectives the child admitted to shooting his teacher, Abby Werner, using profanity, saying, I shot that B dead and I. Did it. I got my mom's gun last night. Police found a loaded nine millimeter handgun lying on the floor in the classroom. In another interview, Deja. Taylor's mother told detectives That's she believed up. the gun was in her purse with a trigger lock on top of her bedroom dresser the morning of the shooting and that the key for the lock was kept under her mattress. Court documents also show that Zwerner told police there were several past disciplinary incidents involving the same boy. Detectives interviewed the child's former kindergarten teacher, now retired, who said the child, quote, placed both of his arms around her neck, pulling down, choking her to the point she could not breathe. A teacher assistant who witnessed it had to forcibly remove him from the classroom. Ten on your side reached out to the attorney for the boy's mother. James Ellison told me the child, he's obviously got a lot of issues and he's in therapy. We're all pulling for his continued improvement. Taylor is due back in court for a plea hearing next week. Abby Zwerner is suing Newport News Public Schools for $40 million. In the newsroom, Stephanie Hudson, 10 on your side. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Is that kid smoking with cigarettes? Hold on. Yeah, uh, I believe that... Uh... That that little young man was uh, or young brother was smoking with cigarettes, and I mean, you know, that happens from time to time. You get these bad kids, behavioral issues at a very young age, and and it happens. And I I think that these people act like that doesn't happen in their community as well, because the way they were acting is like discipline needs to happen, and I'm so sick of nothing being done. And see, when you hear people talking like that, that's what set off my alarm. Like, oh, this kid must be black. Because they're they're saying all of the things that they want to always say about all black people. But they have a situation where this white woman was harmed. So we have to do something and have to say something, make a statement to the world that this is not going to be taken lying down. And that it's not. Because they got this woman indicted and 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 got her pleading guilty, family. So yeah, check this out. Uh, let me get this in here. Because yeah, she literally pled guilty. She hasn't been sentenced yet. But they are trying to, they talking about trying to get this woman some time. It's like, oh yeah, that's great. The, the already disturbed kid needs to watch his mom go to jail for him doing something stupid. Yeah, that's just wonderful. That'll, that, that'll really solve his future issues. I'm sure he'll see the light by his mother going to jail. But one thing again, like that'll you'll he keep hearing come up when it comes to her is that she was smoking weed and she's a gun owner and she was smoking weed and but she's a gun owner and that's against the law over there where they at so yeah let's pay attention to that 
So here's the the clip of her literally uh um her taking of she pled guilty. I don't know what what why she pled. I would have kind of looked to fight those because nah, this no. 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 It, she should have had a, a much better or got a different lawyer, uh, had better counsel. I don't know why. Because they don't just go after parents. You know how much it took for them to go after Ethan Crumley's parents? They had to find damning text messages and, and uh, uh, actual evidence that they were part of, of what he was doing. And they were, you know, negligent of his behavior. This was a completely like, oh, no, we're going to make this is like the Harambe. Oh, we don't have nothing on you. Well, you know, the dad that wasn't even here. Well, shoot. You know, he got a record. So just check this out. We had two breaking news at noon. The mother of the Rich Neck Elementary School shooter pleads guilty to felony child neglect. Deja Taylor reportedly told investigators she left her handgun on top of her dresser on January 6 before her son took it to the school and shot his teacher Abby Zwarner and Sparaco has been following this case from the very beginning and she joins us live now outside the courthouse and Taylor actually faced another charge in this case. What happened with that one? Well, Bethany Deja Taylor also faced a charge of le recklessly leaving a loaded handgun in reach of her child. Now, today in court, prosecutors say they agreed to null process that charge, which means they essentially are setting it aside and not prosecuting Taylor on that charge at this time. Meanwhile, Deja Taylor did plead guilty to felony child neglect, which holds a maximum penalty of five years in prison. However, prosecutors agreed with Taylor's attorney to ask for a sentence within the state guidelines of up to six months, but the judge says he can go above that recommendation if he chooses. Despite Taylor's argument that she kept the gun secured, prosecutors told the judge today that Taylor told investigators she usually kept her gun on top of her dresser at home with a trigger lock on the gun. Prosecutors also said officers did not find a trigger lock, lock box, or key to the box inside her home when they conducted a search warrant after the shooting. Here's what Taylor's attorney, James L. Ellenson, had to say about what he hopes for in the upcoming sentencing. I still think that no jail time would be appropriate. I think, um, again, given the mitigating factors that will present at sentencing, I mean, basically this was the Commonwealth's case. We haven't put on our evidence about what is the mitigation, and that will be presented at uh, sentencing. And Abby Zwerner's attorney sent us a statement in response to this latest guilty plea saying in part, quote, as the criminal probe widens, our focus remains on justice for Abby and holding the school system accountable. Tonight on 13 News Now at 4, we learn more about what prosecutors say the boy told detectives the night of the shooting and how he said he got a hold of his mother's handgun. Live in Newport News, I'm Ann Sparacco for 13 News Now. And thank you. Now, Deja Taylor also did plead guilty to federal charges of lying on her gun permit paperwork that she used marijuana at the time of her purchase. She faces approximately 18 months to two years in prison on those charges. <laughs> now, she lied on her gun application to say she smoked weed. You smoke weed and you lied about it. Now, oh, Mr. Hunter Biden up here, because they keep talking about how that is a federal law. You mean a federal gun law? Well, then how much more would a crackhead like Hunter Biden have issues with guns? And now he has gun charges. So it's funny that, you know, using basically one of the same statutes that they're trying to prosecute her on a federal level, by the way. See, it wasn't just the, the Commonwealth that came after her. Oh, no, the feds did, too. Oh, they hit her twice. So that's why she has that whole other case. She's just up here fighting legal battle after legal battle. 
Now, she's not guilty of what her son did. However, she's damn sure paying for it. So, when we talk about a Hunter Biden, how different is that scenario? You understand the the flip here? Now, I, I can't help but notice how many black women have been silent about this case. Because, you know, with Brickgate and all, you know, no woman deserves to anything like that, blah, blah, blah. That didn't happen. Well, here's a woman who is getting railroaded. And I'm not hearing much out the, the feminist. This is a whole mother over here getting railroaded. Hey, y'all silent. I mean, I can't help but see that. Now, I don't know. What? What would make y'all go silent? Hmm. Maybe it's just simply because she's white. Who knows? <laughs> but here's here's a funny thing about what nobody really considered. And and notice how when the um when the teacher's lawyer is speaking, um, there, there's no mention of the well-being of the child or the children that was in that class. Do y'all notice that? It's very self-centered. It has nothing to do with that. Like, she's over here saying, y'all guys, you didn't do this and do that. Because what did she say? What did they say? $40 million? $40 million lawsuit? Because this little super predator, how they're trying to frame it. Let them tell it. And yeah, so I just, you know, it's amazing. I just can't help but notice how many people are silent on this case. Like this woman is getting railroaded and she didn't do the, uh, the well, whatever, you know, she didn't shoot anybody. It was a misguided six-year-old with emotional issues that are already been documented. I don't know what they, they all, the more should have been done, more should have been, what, what does that mean? What, what is more should have been, and so, should have acted sooner? Oh, so she was supposed to turn her six-year-old over to the state? Oh yeah, they sure know how to raise kids, don't they? Gonna we'll raise them right on into that prison system. The hood is bad enough. You over here trying to, no, no, something needs to be done. He's six. What do you expect? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the nerve of these people. Uh, but family, there, there's another angle that most people ain't speaking about. And that is, what else was going on in that uh, in that school, like in that classroom? Why did he feel that way towards his teacher? It, no, like nobody ever asked that. Like, yeah, what's going on with that? However, you know, there's another story that has came out uh, a little while back. And, and other stories like this come out often, how our black children are treated in these classrooms. Here's a piece, and I'm not going to play this whole uh, uh, whole story, but I want to just give you a, a minute or two of this so you get an idea of what's going on out here with these. Like, your kids might be victims and then, you know, go in there to school and go even out to score. And that there might be a, a reason to that. Like, they're because they're giving you quotes of what this kid said. Did did he not say why he was saying what he was saying? Because we don't hear any of that mentioned. Funny. But the the way look at the way they're framing it. Yeah, I got that be dead. He's six years old. This is the way a six year old is talking. Sound like he in a uh, a hood in a 1970s black exploitation film. Yeah, man. 
I shot that bitch dead. Like, what? Really? I did it. And that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Okay. Uh, but, but again, like I said, there might be a reason that that kid was feeling some type of way towards his teacher. Maybe it was a situation like this. A North Texas teacher's aide is caught on a school camera assaulting an eight-year-old student. But it's what Richardson ISD did not do that had the boy's mother reaching out to our I-team and investigative reporter Brian New. As a result of our reporting here on CBS News Texas and the I-team, the school district now making some changes. And we do want to warn you, you might find some of this video hard to watch. As students waited for the afternoon bus to arrive at Aiken Elementary School in Dallas, a cafeteria camera captured an interaction between this teacher's aide, who works in the special education department, and this eight-year-old student, mm. who's in second grade. The video has mm. no sound, but shows the boy's reaction after being told by the aide to go sit down. The boy, who's enrolled in the school's special education program, then sits at the end of the lunch table in silence. Nearly a minute goes by before he stands back up. This next part may be hard to watch. The boy's mother wants people to see this. According to the police report, the teacher's wow. aide was upset because the boy was using profane language and yelling out racial slurs towards her. When Brittany Wood what? finally saw the video of her son, I did not expect to see what I saw. <laughs> She says it was heartbreaking. It was really, really hard to watch because my child was completely helpless. The day after the assault, a student right. informed the principal of what happened. The principal then called the boy's mother. When the Richardson ISD Human Resource Department went to talk to the teacher's aide, the school district says she immediately resigned. I just don't want anyone else to be at risk. And yeah, I really think? want her to face the music for what she's done. The Richardson School District told us the principal reported the incident to Child Protective Services and made the Dallas Police School resource officer assigned to the campus aware of the incident. But it's who the school uh -huh. district did not tell until we began asking questions the child advocates say uh -oh. is troubling. According to Texas law, when a school employee resigns and there's evidence that the employee abused a student, the superintendent must notify the commissioner of the Texas Education Agency no later than the seventh mm. business day after the resignation. That way, the state's education department mm. can investigate and put the employee on its do not hire registry if needed. Right. But Richardson ISD did not report the teacher's aid to the TEA within seven uh -oh, days. They were on code. The school district did not report it after there was a police report either, or after she mm. was charged with misdemeanor Ooh. assault, or after she pled no contest. Wow. In fact, Richardson ISD did wow. not report the October incident to the TEA until just about a month ago, the day after we reached out to. Okay, the day after they reached out, family. Now, <clears throat> so if there's that much on code with them behavior abusing black children, what's to say that wasn't going on in this little boy's classroom? And then on top of that, look at how they played it. That woman was even charged with assault. Misdemeanor assault, but nonetheless charged with assault. And they're still trying to make sure she doesn't end up on the do not hire registry. So she can go choke a whole little boy and uh, they just like, hey, you know, that's yeah, just one of them. So, yeah, that, that's another thing. When you get out here, start talking about this little this black man thing and black men ain't this black men ain't that. Remember, you got little black boys out here. And you got people out there that do not need to sit up here and feel like, oh, well, I could just go ahead and abuse this kid because, you know, black women don't think they should either. No, that is horrible. Nonetheless, getting to the root of the matter, you know, the, will, will you see 
the same kind of fervent <laughs> prosecution that they've tried and 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 they're bringing this taking this woman to court over multiple things like and how's she gonna raise a kid when she's fighting for this court battle and this court battle that makes no sense and all of these other parents who have had uh and they're a lot of these other school shooter parents are well to do Ain't nobody went to them and got no restitution. <laughs> like they weren't negligent of their children. I'm just saying. What makes them any different? What makes them any better? For the ones unlike Kip Kinkle, who took out took, took care of his parents before he even went to school. But uh <clears throat> yeah. There's that. So, fast forwarding up to good old dope smoking Hunter Biden. Now, remember they talking about that gun law. So, if you're you're you know you're a drug addict, you you filmed yourself smoking drugs. Well, you know he's a gun owner. And so, is it like father like son here? There's no connection. Hunter Biden's problems have nothing to do with Joe Biden. <laughs> okay. Well, let's check out this today's head uh, headline. Live to News Nation correspondent Joe Khalil standing by in D.C. with some more information. Joe. Yeah, so look, we have the nuts and bolts of this now already down. Three different charges in this indictment, two of them for Hunter Biden related to lying allegedly on that form mm. where he said, I'm not a drug user and mm. it was a permit to, to get a gun. The third charge being uh, that he was in illegal possession of that firearm as a drug user. So uh, now, now I want to see how they're going to try to spin these charges. They're the same exact federal charge, but he has three of them. He got three of them. And he was on weed and crack and some more. And you know he is because you got the video evidence. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, look at look at the picture in the middle on the top. I mean, that lets you know, man. <clears throat> you you might still be wet behind the ears if you if you think that what you're looking at right there, if that ain't that stuff, then him with the cigarette and his, <laughs> it's like man. Now, how is it that? There's so much of a big difference between these two. I mean, really? Anyway. The reason that the plea deal originally fell apart and the reason we are here today was in part because both sides of this simply couldn't agree on what their plea deal meant for the future moving forward for Hunter Biden. There were concerns that, as we see now, House Republicans continuing to do these investigations on Capitol Hill into the Biden family, into Hunter Biden. Uh, there were concerns that moving forward, even if he agreed to this plea deal, there were gonna be future potential charges as a result of these investigations. And mm. they simply wanted to get him some level of immunity. It seemed that uh -uh. Hunter Biden's lawyers, last we had actually checked in with them, thought this deal meant one thing. The prosecutors in this case from the <laughs> DOJ thought it meant another thing. That's why the judge threw this out. So let's talk about the politics uh, of this now for a minute. This is gonna be a major headache for the White House, certainly. Uh, you know, they thought that this Hunter Biden situation was going to be behind them legally, uh -huh. certainly not politically, but legally, if that plea deal had gone through back in July, it was at least one thing that they didn't have to worry about uh, and maybe ask questions, you know, answer questions for. No longer the case. If this indictment ultimately ends up being a trial, this is going to continue mm. to be a thorn in the side of 
The White House press team, they will continue to get questions about it. Democrats on Capitol Hill, I imagine the same thing, again, as Republicans continue <laughs> to push forward. Now, the thing we're not talking about here is the other uh, allegations against Hunter Biden, which are the uh -oh. tax crimes that he is also alleged to have committed. Remember, in that plea deal, Correct. it was going to be those that he was going to admit guilt for which was that he right. didn't pay uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes uh, on income that he was making from his foreign business dealings. We don't know what's going to happen with that. Potentially. You know, that's a great point uh, with the foreign business dealings, with a lot of that having to do with Ukrainian uh, uh, elites. <laughs> Talk about return on an investment. <laughs> you could rebuild Ukraine a few times over with the with the type of funding that they're getting from America. However, it's not as much of a pushback. There's lightweight, low vibration pushback from the so-called patriot patriot uh, sector. You know, lightweight. And truth be told, also very lightweight on the uh, illegal invasion at the border. They're not as vocal as you would think they would be. They're not as, we're going to protect this and at all costs and we're going to hold the line. And yeah, yeah, none of that's happening right now. All that January 6th and ain't happening at the border. Just pretty interesting, though. But you know, what does this mean for him? And it, you you see in how, yeah, the, the charges that he has are the same charges that they just made this woman plead to. Now, obviously, they had an agreement. Now we see in that, you know, there's a lot more corrupt, corrupt uh, stuff going on in this White House than, than meets the eye. Not that you didn't know, but I mean, you, I guess you, you, we all speculated. Well, here's some of that proof. And like, I just can't get over it. When I heard about the charge, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Ain't that the same thing they're trying to do to this sister? And so now, how does the judge in this case sentence her? Because like I said, she's yet to be sentenced. Now you have Hunter Biden sitting over here in the same type of situation, but with more charges. So if, you, if you're if you exceeding, then in federal court, doesn't that set a precedent? Because she, that's, you know, that, what are we talking about? Oh, well, let me, let's take that back. This particular, the, these charges, uh, well, no, no, that's right. No, the gun charges. So that's what she's facing 18 months. Just on that charge alone. Yeah, she facing 18 months on that charge alone. Ain't that something to be said? It's a, <laughs> it's a little different. So, yeah, I, I want to know what what is the difference? Because. All of uh, what we're going to hear and, you know, how much we just saw Kamala Harris doing the, the hip hop pander uh, tether palooza at her house, which was absolutely crazy. And then she gives her speech, as you guys saw. Um, and now moving into this, you know, people are talking about you got Nancy Pelosi coming out here talking about she has confidence that Kamala Harris could lead. Like, what are you kidding? <laughs> that really makes no sense, but whatever. No, I don't think she could. She can't get through a a, a interview without flim flamming. Yeah, I mean, cause she knows how to professionally get out there and flim flam. She was up there with Dougie Fresh. I got two Dougs with me. 
oh man, just absolute swagless. Absolute swagless. But yeah, you got to look at the the long con of things. And I think sometimes you got to also notice when there's the shakeup. And this, this is a shakeup because she, <laughs> I, she, she went ahead and played. And I mean, I guess, you know, that's what she had felt she had. It. Well, she played to the misdemeanors and whatnot. Uh, but she still could get some time for it, by the way. But for that lying on the form thing, that's 18 months or more, I think, or, 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 or maybe less. But I know it's 18 months. So and that's federal time. So 18 months is going to be 18 months. Yeah. Yeah, you. that's important. So this is how important it was to make sure that they found they could they knew they couldn't punish the six year old. So they're doing all of this to this this mother. And so she got charges and fed, she got charges in state. I mean, it, it's all bad. It's all bad. Nothing cool about that. Nothing cool about that. In the meantime, Hunter Biden. He got these charges. And they was going to take a plea deal from him. And I'm. I, it's very interesting that that plea deal uh, didn't happen. Because there's this whole situation over here. That's how it's, it's going to be very interesting just to watch how. And also just peep the tone and the nature of how the media addresses this situation. Because I wonder how optimistic people will start talking about Hunter Biden doing some time. And then the other thing about it is, is well, with the Joe Biden part, you know, this is, I mean, this is a, uh, what do they say, a apple from the same tree? Chip from the same block? I don't think it's the other way around. I mean, it's a safe bet. So you have uh, uh, clearly diminished cognitive function, functioning elderly man. Then you have a imposter, fraud, fake black acting vice president who is completely there because black people are convinced that she's black when she's clearly not, but nonetheless. And, and you have a like albatross of a, of a gun toting crack smoke and sun right there front and center. And, <laughs> And they're going to tell us if we are confused about voting for him or Trump, then we ain't black. Mm, 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 mm. All that standing up for the black community family. You need to go watch some of his older videos, uh, older like C-SPANs when he's talking about like crack and, and the effects, man, have you ever seen one of these, these guys are, man, they're like, they're, they're like maniac. Yeah. I don't want anybody out here to hit my grandma or hit my mom in the head while she's trying to carry her groceries in. I mean, this is the type of stuff that Joe Biden would say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this, I mean, shoot, I guess if you catch him off the cuff, he'll probably will still say some stuff like that. Because Joe Biden is so old, he doesn't mind just saying stuff that he shouldn't. Not only that, oh, you know, that's my, I might get in trouble for saying this. I mean, he up there with a whole handlers. 
making sure he don't go off. <laughs> oh my goodness. So <clears throat> we shall see what plays out for our sister Daisy Taylor. Uh you know, I don't think she deserves any time. If you're, especially if you're going with her little one charge, you know, I think you could see fit to give her some pro probation or whatever that's going to go into her other, just run a con concurrent and leave it at that. Because if this dude with three of these felony charges, if. <laughs> If any of these, he don't get time for, how are you going to have three felony federal charges and get no time? This woman got one facing 18 months. I'm just saying. So, and so also speaking of charged, um, yeah, there's some news. There is some news. And, and speaking of charged, you know, Mr. Mr. Uh, I'm not going to defund the police. I'm going to find the police. Well, some of them, some of them officers are crooked officers. Former Memphis cops charged in the death of Tyree Nichols have been booked in federal court. They turned themselves in today and their new charges include using excessive force, failing to intervene, showing deliberate indifference and conspiring to witness tamper as well as obstructing justice. Now, Stephen Pimpo was at the federal courthouse downtown today. We can probably guess how those officers uh, pleaded today, Stephen. Richard Pepper, all those four officers pleaded not guilty and they're out on bond tonight but with conditions dictating where they can go, what they can do, and even who they can talk to. To Darius Bean and attorney John Perry Jr. had no comment after the ex-Memphis police officer made his first appearance in federal court. Bean mm. was joined by fellow ex-officers Desmond oh. Mills, Demetrius Haley, and Justin Smith. Come on, man. Now, now, now where are y'all trying to tell me he from? Where are y'all trying to say he's from? Come on now. Where are y'all? Get a superstar. Where's your family from? One time. I mean, a family. Uh, yeah. That hairline say it all, don't it? That hairline say it all. Yeah. I think this brother is from uh, Haiti. Ex-officers Desmond Mills, Dimitri. Emmett Martin. Eh. Eh. Everybody's like, oh no, they all from down there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so, man. I, I think these people might, you know, might, might have a little something else in them. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about these cats. I mean, I ain't going to say all of them non FBA, but I mean, man. First off, on the right, look at the hairlines. And then over there on the left, uh, is this dude, this Smith, like, is he, is this family even from America? So, <clears throat> eh, okay. Chris Haley and Justin Smith, all facing several new federal charges in the death of Tyree Nichols. We were expecting this. We knew it was coming. We didn't know exactly when. All four pled not guilty and were released on a $50,000 unsecured wow. bond with conditions. Those God, including contact with each other, turning in their passports, not traveling outside the Western District of Tennessee, with exceptions made for the two living in Mississippi, and they aren't allowed to have a gun or even ammunition. 
all very standard, uh, reasonable. My client, Mr. Mills, none of these guys are going anywhere. They've uh, shown up for state court. There's no reason to, to do anything other than release them at this point. Breaking any of these rules will result in a $50,000 fine. Desmond Mills attorney Blake Ballin says it will be a balancing act as they navigate both state and federal court cases. We uh, all are fighting on two fronts now, um, so I, I don't know. And we also won't know anything about the federal schedule for, uh, for a while, um, although they told us to come back September 21st. The fifth former officer, Emmett Martin, is scheduled to appear tomorrow. We had planned for him to come in on Thursday and other plans yeah. were made and so some went in today and some are going in tomorrow. Both attorneys I spoke with say their clients continue to take these charges very seriously. It's especially they scary better. and uncomfortable for uh, somebody who dedicated his life to, to being a law enforcement officer and now finds himself on the other side of things. Well, the fifth officer. Yeah, yeah, when, when you beat somebody to death yeah that's kind of what happens and you know again the disregard for foundational black american life is is prevalent within police culture because you know that is when <laughs> being a black police officer that is the true definition of blue no matter who That is the true definition of blue, no matter who. If they are a black cop, you could pay they pay they skin color, no mind. Pay they lineage, no mind. Charged and that Martin will surrender tomorrow. The other four officers have their next court date next week. Richard Pepper. Stephen, thank you. Well, mm. don't say. It. Wow. He does something. So that's good. Good to see that they, they catching them charges. I mean, it should happen more often, but again, we also understand the reason why these guys caught caught it so quickly. Uh because they were an easy lamb or, you know, they were an easy mark to fall on the sword. To, so when you want to get away from prosecuting police officers um, and be like, hey, we got to feed them something, what better than getting some tools and breaking them? You know what I'm saying? And that's pretty much what they did to those dudes. Uh, they they just took took their tools and broke them. And I ain't mad at that, to be quite honest. Because that's what a tool deserves, in my, in, in my humble opinion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, there is uh, one more story that is a little different. Um, where is that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> It's one of those stories that's on a whole nother note. But nonetheless, we kind of hit this because it it is one of those idiot agenda things. And when I say idiot agenda, I most definitely mean that. This, this is idiot agenda stuff here. Oh goodness. The stuff, the stuff these people do. Let me show you what's going on here. All right, so hopefully y'all can see that. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Now let me bring this. So yeah, so let's see this. All right. So y'all see what's going on here. Dove Partners with Black Lives Matter activists accused of wrongly getting white student expelled to promote, quote, fat liberation. Uh, you see who that is. Melissa Koenig. Beauty giant Dove has partnered with a Black Lives Matter activist to promote fat liberation after she was accused of wrongfully getting a white student expelled 
from her university over a miss a misheard remark. Zaya Bryant, a community organizer and student activist studying to, at the University of Virginia, made an announcement she was a Dove ambassador. On her Instagram page at the end of August, uh, as she spoke about her goal of ending the stigma of being overweight. What is the stigma? You, you're either overweight or you're not. Anyway, uh, my belief is that we would be centering the voices and the experiences of most of the most marginalized people and communities at at all times, Bryant22 in the video said. Oh, wow. Being overweight? Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. So when I think about what fat liberation looks like to me, I think about centering the voices of those who've lived in and who maneuver through spaces and institutions in a fat body. The caption of uh, the caps the captioned her video by saying, uh, "Fat liberation is something we should all be talking about." Tell us what fat liberation means to to you using the hashtag size freedom and tagging Dove to share your story. All right. Support this campaign. All right. That's okay. I mean, everybody need to use some Dove. I heard, you know, a lot of, a lot of people like that Dove. All right. Zaya Bryant announced on Instagram she is patterning or partnering with Dove to support fat liberation. Uh, let's see. But even though Bryant has been praised for her work with Black Lives Matter and getting the Robert E. Lee statue taken down in Charlottesville, she has also come under fire in recent months for her efforts to get a white student named Morgan Bettinger suspended from campus. She claims Betting Bettinger, um, I guess that's the name, Bettinger, referred to Black Lives protesters as good speed bumps in the summer of 2020, only to later admit she may have misheard her. You know, I vaguely remember that. Um, I remember that story. Okay, so now I know who this person is now. All right. Um, let's see. The incident began in July 2020 when Betting, Bettinger mistakenly drove down a street where Black Lives Matter protesters had gathered. Uh-huh. She told Reason Magazine she saw a dump truck partially block the road, but because the street was not completely blocked off, she continued driving. When she realized the road was actually being blocked off from traffic, Bettinger said she decided to park her car and decided to see what was going on. As she passed by, Bettinger said the truck, the truck driver began talking to her and the two had a brief conversation. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's the, I guess that's the Instagram post. Yeah, that's Instagram post. Okay, so going on with the story. Uh, let's see. He said, everyone should be talking about fat liberation. <clears throat> the idea of ending the stigmatism being of being overweight. Uh, Benninger says she remembered telling the truck driver something along the lines of, it's a good thing that you were here because otherwise these people would have been speed bumps trying to praise his efforts to block traffic. The, dr the driver later corroborated Bettinger's remarks to local cops, but Bryant overheard part of the conversation and tweeted that she said the protesters would make speed, good speed bumps, along with a video 
showing Bettinger backing down the street in her car while Bryant and several other protesters follow. Ah. Uh -huh. And so that's what's going on right there. Right. Mm-hmm. Morgan Bettinger was accosted by Black Lives Matter protesters. Okay. I did this, you know, so, so point of reference, Black Lives Matter protesters. A bunch of uh, white LGBTQ women. And a man. Because there's no black people around. But anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Morgan Bettinger was accosted by Black Lives Matter protesters after she turned down a road where they were demonstrating in July 2020. She then called the police and started crying, saying we were attacking her, Brian claimed. The tweet was quickly shared more than a thousand times and internet sleuth soon identified the driver as Bettinger. Uh, the, the fact that she had a, a, had pro-police social media posts and her late father had worked as a police officer only seemed to irate people more. Uh, I, I'm now, now maybe I'm, I don't know the whole story about her talking to the, the, the driver and, oh, well, they would have been speed bumps by who you still, cause I mean, I'm confused. If you realize that people were still in the street, oh, cause he was blocking it. So if you just went around the truck and, it, oh yeah, there's people there. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. They're saying. So, uh, let's see here. <laughs> um, okay. Internet sleuth soon identified the driver as Morgan Bettinger, and Bryant demanded she be expelled from the University of Virginia. Just one day later, Bryant began demanding that the school administrators expel Bettinger email the UVA deans now to demand that Morgan face consequences for her actions and that UVA stop graduating races. Bryant herself filed a complaint with the University Judiciary Committee, a student-run disciplinary system, alleging Bettinger, Bettinger had threatened students. Health and safety. Hmm. It found Bettinger guilty of making a legitimate threat against the protesters, despite being unable to prove Brian's claims about her intentions. The jurors ruled that even saying the words in harmless in a harmless manner during a protest merited punishment, according to the documents obtained by Reason Magazine. Brian also filed a complaint with the school's Office for Equal Opportunity and Civil Rights in which she claimed Bettinger repeated the statement five times and had discriminated against her due to, due to her race. Now, okay, now, now, that, now that story is taking a great turn because they're saying, oh, well, you tried to get her fired by mishearing something. Well, if this... This last part, well, somebody's lying. So, so I'm, I'm confused. Hmm. Yeah, some, somebody's not telling the truth here. The EOCR office found that three of the five accusations could not be corroborated, and a report found Bryant most likely did not hear Bettinger's comments firsthand after no eyewitnesses were able to corroborate her version of events. Bettinger eventually graduated from UVA, but with a permanent mark on her record. Reason reported likely hindering her chances of getting into law school as, as she had dreamed. Okay. 
This whole situation had a huge impact on my life. And let's see, the university has never had to answer for what their actions have done. Benninger is now said to be considering bringing a lawsuit against school officials seeking to get her record cleared. Huh. That liberation. Whew, that liberates, but that just sounds ridiculous. I mean, truth be told, you just look hot and stuffy, ma'am. I'm sorry. I mean, you, you, your chest is sweating now. Brian has continued to make a name for herself, being profiled in in the Washington Post and being named to Ebony's Power 100 list last year. Wow. Her lawyers claim her conviction and punishment were effectuated without a constitutionally sufficient process because the school had failed to retry her or provide a de, no, a de novo review of the clear, clearly erroneous judgment of the UJC. All right. Meanwhile, Brian has continued to make a name for herself being profile. Okay, then. I don't know why that just repeated. All right. I guess I guess that's the end of it. The Post reached out to Dove and its parent company, Unlever, for comment. And obviously, they haven't heard back. So, truth be told, do we even know if this woman is truly even partnering with Dove? Or is this some I come out, some kind of weird scam? I don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Definitely kind of hard to tell, but yeah, that's what's going on there. <laughs> I just found that story extremely interesting. Like, what is this about? But with that, <laughs> I think, let me see. What else I got? Um, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Knew I had something else. Uh, real quick. Uh, and this is going to take a little, little interesting turn, but you know how they're promoting another thing about the agenda is promoting this idea of carelessness, especially sexually. And, you know, people are acting like, you know, it, these things happen in, in a, just by chance. Oh, yeah, they're just starting going to rap about being overly ratchet and this and that. No, it's being promoted. It's absolutely being promoted. And it's, you know, it's targeted. Well, you know, there's a video that has surfaced from a while ago, actually. Um, and it's Suki Hana talking about what she did, and she knows what she did uh, to kind of get on, you know, and that's what she wanted to do. And and so here's actually her speaking a little bit of common sense. Um, you know, for those of you who have seen this, I don't know who has, who hasn't. Uh, this is your first time seeing it. This is Suki Hana out of her own mouth about to say but as far as this music stuff i won't be doing this music stuff anymore i started this because this is my dream and you know i wanted to make sure i could get me and my kids out the hood this has always been my passion to rap a while ago i had signed a contract and i didn't know nothing about the business or the or, or, the, or this game out here and just right now i'm realizing that i signed my soul I, I sold my soul to the devil i signed myself to the devil i don't even own myself no more i don't I sold my soul to the motherfucking devil and I done pray. I pray and I pray and I pray. You know, and it's just like I don't know if God can get me out of this, you know, and it's just it's just like to the point where I don't even know like I can't I just wanna say I'm sorry to my fans. I know y'all love me, I know y'all believe in me, but I can't 
I didn't know what I was doing back then. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a very interesting piece. Very interesting piece. And who knows? <clears throat> that may be sincere. Uh, that may not be. You know, who's who's to say? You know, I, I, I definitely can't. Uh, you know, it seems like that was a, a legit heartfelt uh, position. Seems like she was genuinely feeling distraught. And uh, regretting, you know, some of her decisions. As, you know, what we see they are now. At the end of the day, uh, I believe she is a Nigerian. So, you know, there's that. Not our culture, not our worry, not our concern. <laughs> not our concern at all. However, <clears throat> reparations, reparations is most definitely our concern. And, and we have the people in California. I don't know if y'all have seen that. Uh, there's an article talking about how, uh, how the black folks in California don't, aren't really well, they say they're they're against reparations, or they they don't agree with reparations, and that's something I, I'm like. Well, what difference does that make? What they think? Who cares? You know, that's uh, neither here nor there. So let me uh, let me take a quick look at this article here, and this is uh, this is NBC. Black. And it says black lawmaker lawmakers in California push. Come on, got to pop up. Hold on. OK, push to overcome resistance on reparations. Um, say this is an article by Curtis Bunn. And it goes on to say the California Congressional Black Caucus is gearing up to launch a statewide campaign to educate its citizens on the critical nature of reparations for black people, including cash payments for the harms of slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, this comes on the heels of a University of California Berkeley poll released this week that shows most Californian, Californians oppose black residents receiving any financial compensation as a part of reparations recommendations for, uh, from the state assembly. Uh, goes on to read among the two or among all of those who responded, 59% rejected the idea of cash payments to black des descendants of slavery in the state. Meanwhile, 76% of black respondents were in favor of cash payments and 66% of white voters were opposed to black Californians receiving money. Democrats are more likely to support cash reparations than Republicans and those with no party affiliation who strongly oppose. Uh, Reginald, Jones, Reginald Jones Sawyer, a member of the reparations task force, said the results show a lack of knowledge around California's deep involvement in slavery and other forms of racism that devastated black families. I don't know about that, brother. Um, polls can be skewed because usually enough information isn't given to the people. Um, and that's, I, I can agree with that. Uh, let's see. So, so that they don't give a, get a, uh, full understanding of what's going on. If each individual that they polled had, had read that a 400 document for a uh, 400 page document we had last year which proved how California was complicit in chattel slavery and read the uh, the 1100 page document that printed that we printed out this year which talked about the reparations or what reparations should be there's absolutely no way 
you believe that there shouldn't be some type of compensation. To inform the public, Joan Sawyer said, California Black Caucus will begin a fundraising campaign to hire a firm to disseminate clear and concise and direct messaging about the report. Obviously, most people didn't read the preliminary or final report by the task force. People now are trying to debunk those findings. Another hurdle will be educating members of the California Assembly who are expected to sponsor legislation based on the task force or 1,000-page report published in June. The report covered a myriad of areas uh, and recommended more than 100 statewide policies to address generations of discrimination and racial disparities. It did not, however, propose a dollar amount owed to people who are able to demonstrate that they are the descendants of either an enslaved African-American in the United States or a free African-American living in the United States prior to 1900. Joan Sawyer gave an example that he hopes will ring true, uh, true to assembly members and the general public. If you were to buy something and later on you find out that it was stolen property, you wouldn't keep that property. Uh, it depends on who you're talking to, brother. Uh, let's see. Well, the labor of African Americans was stolen for centuries, and now we're asking for us, for us to restore our dignity, restore what was taken from us, and any legal system would tell you that that this is uh, the appropriate measure that you should take, and I think. Any American, once they are educated, would understand why it is so important to have reparations. The lack of a dollar of a dollar figure, however, is a sticking point for many black people. Kathy Adams, president of the Oakland African American Chamber of Commerce, drove to Sacramento for the final public hearing at the end of June. She said she left profoundly moved. Listen to those families talk about how generational wealth was taken from them when they had land and property seized by white people for no good reason other than they wanted it or didn't want them to have it, Adam said. Good Lord, it broke my heart. Education about what has happened is critical. I've learned so much and it reinforced for me the importance of cash reparations in addition to the programs in the report. But this is important. This isn't about black people looking for a check, a handout. This is bigger than that. The harms of slavery are are real. We are dealing with a number of disparities and inequities in the black community that stem from what was denied or taken from us. Our aunt, and our ancestors, we we seem um, excuse me, we seem to fall at the end of the spectrum every time. Which ain't that the truth? In every way, and I think anybody being a part of a poll saying we should not be financially compensated is wrong. Denise Branch, an, an anti-racism educator and racial equity consultant, said the poll's results are telling about an attitude toward black people. Yes, it is. That right there is what you call a societal indictment. It's very telling about people's attitude towards black folk. The legacy of slavery is still impacting black Americans financially. While black people made it possible for many non-black community uh, communities to come to America and receive a handout. Those same communities believe that American paying, uh, America paying its incalculable debt owed to Black Americans would be a handout. White Americans believe they owed nothing because they believe themselves not to be their ancestors, but they are beneficiaries of financial privileges handed over to them by their ancestors. Having a clearer understanding of 
The history will make a difference. Um, the California Black Caucus plans to work with the legislature, which will not present its recommendations to government or Governor Gavin Newsom until early 2024. Between now and then, the caucus will solicit insight and ideas from the public to help influence those voting on reparations for Californians. Um, finishes up with saying, some of the best ideas we ever got did not come from elected officials, did not come from academics, did not come from a bureaucrat, he said. It came from real people. And that's going to be the, uh, the thing that will get us over when we start talking to, to our fellow legislators about why this is so important and why they need to vote yes on it. We're going, we're not going to get them all, but we, we don't need them all. We just need the majority in the assembly. And I think we have a good, clear path to that. Well, well, I, I'm, I'm really glad about that response. That is dope. That was a good response. I have no problem with that at all. That was that was on it. That was on it. So yeah, shout out to them, and shout out shout out to all the task force uh, going out legitimately seeking to to do the right thing by foundational Black Americans because it is about time. And so hey, I I, I cannot be mad at that. Uh, like I said again, shout out to the California task force. Man, <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. So, you know, recapping what we what we have talked about this evening. Ah, let's see how this all plays out with this this sister's sentencing, and then how the media starts talking about these charges, because. I mean, there's there's time time with these charges. Them them federal charges all have time. All of them, and the lion on the like he's kind of dead to right with that. If you are saying you had enough evidence that she was smoking weed, well, you have enough evidence to know that he was smoking crack, a crack smoking gun told her whose last name is Biden. <laughs> I, 2024 is just looking disastrous. It is looking disastrous. And I hope the, the vote blue, no matter who people are really, really noticing. This is a sinking ship. You have two at the helm that will absolutely run you into a giant iceberg abandon ship and start looking to save yourselves not no party because that party ain't done nothing for us it's never had our interests in mind it look at how people even respond and i that that article i just read about the Berkeley poll and all of these so-called liberals in California don't want black folks to get cash payments in reparations. So what that say? That says that that is a societal thing. It doesn't go away with a president or a historical Position. All oh, those federal, federal judges. It doesn't make a difference there. We got to see it make a tangible difference. Beep, beep, beep. We got to vote. Blue, no matter who. Not this time. We vote in our interest. 
and I hope that y'all folks can see it. That is the absolute need that we need to, to focus on. And get these reparations. And like they say, wait, the Republicans ain't, ain't most likely. I'll tell you what the Republicans will do. The Republicans will do what they have to to stay afloat. Just like, I mean, all it takes is for one party to learn a, a good, hard lesson. And I think 2024 is going to be the, that for the Democrats. Benign neglect has run its course. But however, you have all of these people who are as old as the benign neglect policy still sitting in office. <laughs> and I'm being sarcastic, of course. But these people aren't that much younger. So when you have situations like that, you got to make a, a, a decision. And you, you see they're not changing. Nancy Pelosi just said she's going to run again. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. So for all of you Biden sexuals, this one's for you. not we're not putting on our capes we are not putting on our capes and coming to to the defense of the democrats while while all you could do is talk about open the open borders we got kids in cages you know you would not have kids in cages if you put them on planes and sent them home you know there is a, a simple way of rectifying that issue and it is called a jet it is called a aeroplane. Put them on that jet and send them on. Because at the end of the day, all they're doing over here is, is getting across the border, getting set up, knowing where they're getting the handouts and the goodies, and then they call on home. <laughs> So at the end of the day, y'all are going to have to, to, to make some decisions that, hey, we're not going to crash in this car. <laughs> and what they keep trying to do is trying to put all people together. You're hearing all of this coalition talk. Nah. And again, oh, well, Malcolm X, Malcolm X was a Pan-Africanist. Uh, uh, no, no, see, there's a difference in Pan-African. And see, understanding the difference between having love for your brother from another mother, but knowing what your family is. See, like this. Thank you right there. We, I would not uh, limit our employment demands to Negroes. I would include Puerto Ricans and other minorities throughout our country, which have been similarly discriminated against, though not for so long a period of time as Negroes. Puerto, Puerto Ricans weren't enslaved. Slavery. Yeah, this is a problem that stems from slavery. Now, and this compensation, yes, so this compensation is coming to people who were enslaved by the white man for 400 years. The Puerto Ricans don't even fit into this picture. And well, they do fit into it. No, they the, do fit into the problem it. is the Negro problem. Yeah, they're not lynching ne uh, Puerto Ricans. If a dark-skinned Puerto Rican went down to Mississippi, he as long probably as he would be lynched speak too. If Spanish, he wouldn't no. be lynched. No, they don't. It's ask the Negro him here, and as long as he can speak Spanish or some other language, or if he ties his head up with a with a turban or something, he can go anywhere in Mississippi or in your home that he desires. You're not aware of the fact, are you, that African students have been arrested in our demonstrations in the South? When they've been they speak French. When they have been mistaken for the so-called Negro in America, they've been arrested. What I'm saying is. <laughs> But what we need to do, see, brother, we need to push the coalition because, see, it's so divisive and it's so xenophobic if you don't want to let other people up on your on your progress. And, and like, oh, you just have to act like everybody, foundational black Americans, Americans created everything. I mean, no, the Caribbean and Africa, they all had parts in black music and, and gospel and funk and...
And all that is about trying to get their hands, their grubby little hands on the last story I just read. Reparations. They are trying to mess themselves into us because we delineated so tough and made everything about lineage based that now they just have to lie about history. However, hashtag hands off our reparations. You have no rights here. We're not under the empire. Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Let it fall and let us rise. Can you dig it? All right. So thank you all for tuning in so much once again. You know, as we do right here on the Beatzilla PDX official show, again, make sure you hit that like button, share. And if you have not already subscribed to this channel, you definitely should do so right now. Hit the notification bell, hit the word, all that way you'll be notified anytime this channel goes live or a video is uploaded. So let's watch all of the shields, especially the 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 uh the <laughs> the Roland Martins and the Joy Reeds. Let's let's see how we work this because this whole sister over here got this case that's sitting out there. Um, and she got this charge, and so you you have a barometer of of how it was looked at when it was the six year old boy, and they tried to get, and they ended up putting charges on this sister. So let's see if they come with that same energy for Hunter Biden, and let's understand it that there's going to be a lot of heavy shilling going on to the black voters, the the black populace. It, it's a babe about to pour it on super duper thick. So uh, be mindful of that family. You know, be mindful of the 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 powers that be, the, the propaganda arm of supremacy. That that very, 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 very effective tool of war is headed your way. To say, well, this is just the father's affair. It ain't got nothing to do with the son and all of this. And well, there's still this IRS situation going on too, as well. Remember, they did all that talking about uh, Trump's tax returns. Well, this right here is in the president's very house too. So, yeah, there's that. So, you know, I said all that to say that we're going to have a lot of people coming around us in these new days, um, trying to talk that talk about how, well, this is different, and it's not the same, and yada, 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 and I, it doesn't matter. Fam, you have no argument here. That's pretty much all I could tell any of y'all that want to try bringing that madness to us. Because this is an intelligent, political-minded black base. Not what you're used to. So. You know, but we, we do totally understand what you have to do. But we would have solidly advise you to, to turn from your wicked ways and repent. But we know you won't. But as a gesture of goodwill, I, myself, beat Zilla PDX official, those of us here at the Beatzilla PDX official show, the grassroots, you in the chat, and the voices of new black media. I think it's safe to say that, you know, when we throw you this, this life raft, you should definitely take it. Because we proudly dedicate this song to you. <laughs> all right family you can follow me on facebook instagram and twitter at beatzilla pdx 
You can email me at ourrealtruth at gmail.com. And if you want to put some money in the bucket by way of donation, you could definitely do so and support this broadcast and this channel as uh, at Cash App, dollar sign, Beatzilla PDX. That is Cash App, dollar sign, Beatzilla PDX. We also have PayPal, which is Zilla Music. That is Z I L L A M U Z A K at PayPal. And with that being said, family, y'all have a, a good, safe, uh, productive, prosperous weekend. Peace, power, blessings, and protection be up on all of you who help support this channel. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. So stay black, stay vigilant, stay alive. Always keep your three smooth stones at the ready. Black first, black first, black first. Shalom, y'all. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. What am I? Where am I at? Where am I at there? I'm sending y'all off with the wrong with the wrong intro. We need the outro. Where is it at? Oh, good lord! Ah, oh, there we go. So, like I said, family, and keep that slingshot ready. So, y'all be blessed. Have a great weekend. I'm gone. When you know who Satan is. Yes, sir. You don't have to kill him. No. The stone of truth. Yes. See, that's what you throw. Yes, sir. Right, right. Allah says, had we wished to take a pastime from before, surely we would have done it. Nay, we cast truth at falsehood till we knock out its brains. Every one of you that knows the truth, stand up and tell it from the mountaintop. Black people can't take it no more. So wherever you are on the job, in the factory, I don't care where you are. If you know the truth, stand up on the truth and tell Satan, who the hell are you to try and pick my friends? Farrakhan is God's man. And you are from the enemy of God. So to hell with you. Stand up on it like a man. Yes,